And now, it's time to transform your life in 15 minutes. Here's your host, Pia McAdams. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. My name is Pia. I'm an author. I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. And on this morning broadcast, this is where we're doing five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. And for this morning, we're gonna be talking about judging and why we judge. Give me a second, I I see that it's a little dark here. There we go. Um, So we're gonna be talking about why we judge and particularly about having a fixed mindset. So I wanna ask you, do you say things to yourself like, you know, it's hard for me to lose weight or I'm not a good athlete or natural athlete. I'm not good with numbers or I'm not creative or or even I'm a procrastinator. Like all of these things are stemming from a fixed mindset. And so you may be saying, well, why does this matter? Well, the beliefs that we have about ourselves determines our actions. And so if you're coming from a fixed mindset, you can imagine again, while we're talking about what we're talking about is you succeeding or having been having the success that you want it's going to be that much, much more challenging for you if you're coming from a fixed mindset. All right. So let me give you a story. This is actually, this is a true story. It's a, it's a friend of mine, but I kind of changed her name. Um, so my friend, her name is Christy and Christy wanted to, um, she wanted to run, like she really wanted to lose weight and she wanted to be, she wanted to run to do it, but she wasn't a runner. So what Christy did was, you know, she started off running, but she she wasn't like a new runner. Like she would, she ran a little bit in the past, but not a lot. You know, she maybe jogged a couple of times, but she really didn't consider herself a runner. So when she started out, I mean, she probably did like two miles in like 15 minutes, which if, you know, as you can imagine, it's, it's, that's really slow, you know, compared to, you know, to other, you know, when she was comparing herself to other people. But in, in general too, like, you know, 15 miles in an hour of running is considered a slow pace. Not good or bad, just a slow pace. And so anyway, so when she decided to set a goal, she decided not to set a goal based upon uh, time because she wasn't fast. And then she also didn't want to set a goal of, let's say, like running a 5K or 10K. And the reason why is because she realized that a lot of times when people do set those goals, let's say like a 5K or 10K, then once that big race is finished, then they quit running. And that's what her, that's what she really ultimately wanted to do was not quit. So she decided that to be her goal, to not be a quitter. So she wasn't going to quit. So more specifically, what she, the goal was is that she wasn't going to wait a, a long period of time in between her runs. So as you can imagine, this kept her consistently running like four or five days a week. And she kind of shared with me that, you know, throughout the process, she probably missed like three days at the most when she was on vacation. But other than that, she was running like four or five days a week. So it was, she was doing really, really well and just really, you know, focusing just on running and not quitting like that literally was her goal. So some days she run faster than others and some days she run slower than others. And then she realized that it was the days that she ran slower. That was really the best days. Why? Because she didn't quit. Like she wasn't really feeling good. So she ran slower, but she didn't quit. So she felt really good about those days. Well, this was back in um, October of last year when she actually ran her first 5k. And so she ran, it was some type of, I don't know, like Halloween or whatever. And so she ran, she wore a costume and, and ran the race. And she was so excited that she finished the race in 28 minutes. All right. So for those of you that don't know, a 5K is like 3.1 miles. So she ran it in 28 minutes. So she was really, really happy because throughout the race, she just kind of, she didn't, wasn't, again, she wasn't focusing on speed and she wasn't focused on time. She was just running the race. She was saying she was just, you know, enjoying because it was a costume race. So people were wearing costumes. So she was just, you know, in, you know, in, in the, in the moment, just enjoying the scenery of other people with their costumes. So fast forward to December, she decided to um, set December and I'm saying fast forward for us, but obviously at, for her, it wasn't fast forward. But she decided to run her first marathon in December of last year. And so she hired a coach and, and, you know, when she first started on that, the journey of becoming um, a runner or of running, she didn't consider herself a runner. And then who would have thought like within that year's time frame, you know, she was running four or five days, um, um, uh, start off running four or five days. Now she increased her, her running time. She was also running like up to a hundred miles a month. And she even hired a running coach and she became a runner. She considered herself a runner. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because think about her process when she was going through um, the whole thing. The thing is she was focused on the process and not focused on the result. 
So in other words, she wasn't focused on trying to lose weight. She wasn't focusing on trying to be, uh, have a best time. She wasn't focusing on the actual race. She was focusing on the process of not quitting, of enjoying the times that she was running. Okay. So again, by having a fixed mindset, if you have a fixed mindset, you're going to be focusing on the results. You say, well, why does this matter? Well, again, you're going to be focused on the results. You're going to be doing things like you're going to avoid challenges. You're not going to put in the effort. And, you know, for some of us, when we think in terms of, of how we are as a people, you know, let's say I'm not talking, you know, like, let's say good or bad. We tend to always think, you know, consciously think that we're good people or we don't have a, a fixed mindset. Right. We want to say, like, obviously, I didn't talk about the alternative. The alternative is the growth mindset, which we'll talk more about tomorrow. And uh, this is based again, we're all talking about, we're talking about mindset. And this is based upon a book by um, a psychologist called Carol Dweck. And she, she talks about the two different types of mindset. So a fixed mindset and also a growth mindset. So obviously we're talking about the fixed mindset. And this is important because a lot of times what I'm saying is we like to tend to think of ourselves in the best light possible, right? Because no one wants to be the bad person. No one wants to be, you know, the negative person. No one wants to like, for instance, you know how you say, yeah, I have a friend that I just can't be around her because, you know, she's just so negative. Well, do you ever think that sometimes that you may be that friend? Well, consciously, we don't want to believe that. We don't want to think that we are, but subconsciously we may be. And so what I challenge you for today and from this point forward is to listen to how you're talking, how you're showing up, what the thoughts that are coming up in your mind, because those thoughts that come up in your mind is going to ultimately come out of your mouth. So you may not think that you are, that you have a fixed mindset, right? But if you think, if you think about the questions I talked about before, talking about not being good with numbers or hard for me to lose weight. Those are coming from a fixed mind point, stand of view, a uh, point of view. And obviously, you know, I'm not saying that you're always negative. You know, of course, there's like a spectrum, right? There's a spectrum. But think again, listen to how you're showing up on a daily basis. We may consciously say, oh, I'm a good person or, or I have a, you know, I don't, I'm not negative. But if you start to listen to yourself, you're going to find out that there are some things that come out of your mouth that is based upon a, a fixed mindset and myself included. Like I was talking to my friend, my BFF Nisi the other night, and it wasn't that it was such a negative mindset per se, but it was a neck. Like I, I don't consider myself having a negative mindset. Like who does or have a fixed mindset? Like who does? Right. Um, I pretty much, you know, no, I have a growth mindset or, I, you know, choose to believe I have a, a growth mindset. But when I was talking to her, something that came up, she pointed out, she said, well, that's one way to look at it. But what about this? And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you for pointing that out to me. And see, again, it wasn't something that I consciously thought that I was saying something that came from a fixed standpoint of view. But when it was pointed out to me, I was like, oh, my God, you're absolutely right. OK, so that's what I challenge you for today is just to listen to what the things that are coming out your mouth. You know, again, ultimately comes from the thoughts in your mind. And uh, just see if you have a negative mindset, because remember, guys, your daily actions will determine what you believe. And if you believe about if you're coming from a fixed standpoint of view, you're not going to be putting in the action. You're not going to put in the effort. You're not going to ultimately have the success that you desire. All right. So hopefully this information was uh, was useful for, for you. And again, share this with your, your family and your friends, because and like what I don't want you to do is like, let's say that you're you're talking to. And all of a sudden you say, oh, that's neg that's a fixed mindset. You know, you may not want to do that. For me, when my friends are talking with me, I appreciate that kind of stuff. Like I appreciate when people point out, you know, like if I'm being negative or if I'm not, you know, if I'm if I'm coming from a fixed mind point, point of view, they won't say fixed mind point. They'll just say you're being negative. Or matter of fact, they don't usually tell me I'm being negative. They'll just, you know, my friends, my good friends will just say something like, you know, well, that's one way to look at it. OK, and that's a better approach because you get you don't want to always just kind of like point the fingers at people, because when we're talking about judging, if you're coming from a fixed mind point of view, you tend to be judgmental. So remember, we talked about why we judge. Well, this is why we judge is because it's coming from a fixed mind point of view. All right. So I think I'm done to make sure I got everything here. Sorry, just kind of looked around here. But uh, there's a lot, a lot on this, guys, in this book that um, that I'm reading um, about the mindset with the. Uh, Carol Dweck is actually really good, very informative about mindsets. And keep in mind that what you believe ultimately determines what you're going to achieve in life. All right. Okay, so now we're going to transition over to 
the yoga and uh, this is the body section where we're going to be doing a five minute yoga routine so again if you're in bed I invite you to roll over get yourself out of bed um, you know there's a little space on the floor near your bed you can get on the floor if you're in the office you can kind of close the door you know or if if not make an appointment with yourself so that you will do this yoga or at least yoga and some meditation at some point during your your day today all right all right so as I'm Continue talking. You guys get yourself centered, ground, and line by taking your, well, as I find the music, I should say, get yourself centered, ground, and line by taking your three deep ujjayi breaths. Set your intention on what it is that you want to accomplish in this next five minutes and meet me on the mat.
And as you exhale, we're going to curl those toes under and take them out facing dog. Just hold this for a couple breaths. Downward facing dog is an active rest. So whenever we're in this position, we're resting. But again, feel free to modify if you need to. All right, let's go ahead and step forward, right, left. Inhale, take it all the way up. We're going to arch back a little. Exhale, swan dive your body forward. Now look up halfway. Flatten right, out the palms, step back this time left, right into the plank. Again, as you continue exhaling, release your knees, your chest, and your chin. Inhale up to the cobra, relax the shoulders. And exhale, curl those toes under and take it to downward facing dog. Now this sequence that we're doing now is known as uh, the sun salutation. So we're gonna go just a little faster now. Go ahead and step forward, right, left. Inhale, take it all the way up. Arch back. Exhale, swan dive the body forward. Look up halfway. Flatten out the back, step back into the plank. Release the knee, chest, chin, or you can chat around the Dandasana. Inhale, throw the cobra or up dog. And as you exhale, downward facing dog. Now step forward, left, right. Inhale, take it all the way up, arch back. This time as we exhale, we're gonna take it to the chair. Now this one, you're bending or bringing your knees together. Your head stays in alignment with the bicep, your palms are open up, and you're sitting back, elbow on towards the mat. Go ahead and bring the palms together at the heart center. Exhale, twist over towards the right hinge, so that the outer part of that left elbow is touching the right part of the knee. As you continue breathing on the next exhale, you're gonna open up the hand. So the right arm is gonna go up and the left fingertips are gonna go down towards the mat. Your glaze is following your thumb unless there's any strain or stress and you're looking forward or you're looking down. Now go ahead and bring those palms together. Rotate back to the front, lift up, arch back, forward fold. Look up halfway. Flatten out the back. Step back to the plank. Knee, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana. Inhale. And exhale. Now step forward. Inhale, take it all the way up. Arch back. Exhale to the chair. Relax the shoulders. Bring the palms together with the heart center. Twist over toward the left hinge so that the outer part of the right elbow touches the outer part of that left knee. Now the next exhale, we're gonna open up our palms. Again, your glaze follows your thumb. Unless there's any strain or stress, then feel free to look forward or look down. Now bring those palms back together. Rotate back to the front, arch back and dive the body forward. Now look up halfway. Flatten out the palm, step back. Knee, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana. Inhale. And exhale. Now this time keeping your palms flat, go ahead and walk your feet in toward the palms. And then I want you to take your fingertips and clasp the outer part of your elbows and just kind of forward fold into your Tadasana. You're going to let the crown of your head bring your body weight naturally forward. Micro bend on those knees. You can sway your body side to side. Remember, do what feels good. As you inhale, just kind of holding your position. And as you exhale, you're going to release and surrender into the stretch. All right, return back to the center, release the fingertips down towards the mat, and then slowly round yourself up. Again, taking it one vertebrae at a time, knowing that your head is the last to rise. Inhale, take it all the way up, fingertips. Exhale, dive the body forward. This time you're gonna place your palms down flat. You're gonna walk your feet out, toe heels to the edge of the mat, 
And you're going to release your tailbone down toward the mat. You're going to take your elbows and push out on those inner thighs. Bring your palms together at the heart center and bow your head down to the malasana. And go ahead and extend some gratitude. Now release the palms down to the mat and then take yourself behind and slowly start to transition yourself into a comfortable seated position facing the front. Making sure to join your sits bones and off the fleshy part of your bottom. Now go ahead and draw your breath in. Take a nice deep breath. And as we exhale, take the fingertips down toward the mat. Do that again. Deep breath. Inhale into your nose. And exhale. One more time. Nice deep breath. This time we're going to bring in all of that positive energy. We're going to greet the palms together at the very top. As we exhale, bring your palms down to the heart center. And we say Namaste. All right, thank you for taking the time to practice yoga with me. This brings us to the third and final exercise of the day, which is going to be the meditation. So just let me explain to you a little bit about what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a two-minute meditation. And during this meditation, what you're going to be doing is you're going to breathe, be breathing. You're going to not manipulate your breath in any form, shape, or fashion. You're just going to breathe as you normally would. But you're going to be counting your exhales. Okay. At any time while you're counting, if your mind becomes distracted by either outside noises or internal noises known as thoughts, then you're going to first acknowledge the distraction, and then you're going to redirect your attention, your focus back to your breath, and then you're going to restart your counting with the number one. So for example, let's say that you're counting, and you get up to the number three, and then you realize there's something that you have to do today. So I want you to acknowledge what it is that you have to do today, and then redirect your attention back to your breath, and then start your counting all over with the number one, okay? So before we get started, as always, we're gonna take our three deep, huge dry breaths, and we're going to set an intention. So a good intention to have today would be to make sure that you keep your focus for the entire two minutes. All right, so go ahead and take a nice deep breath, inhale into your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Again, nice deep breath. Inhale into your nose. And exhale into your mouth. One more time. Deep breath. Inhale into your nose. This time as you exhale, go ahead and close your eyes and begin counting now.
release, relax, and return refreshed and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. I want to thank you for taking the time to meditate with me. And also, thank you for watching this live broadcast of Transform Yourself in 15 minutes. Again, please share this information with your family and friends because, again, we're all, we're all hopefully in hopes of making the world a better place. And where does it start? It starts with you. Now, your word for today is stupendous. I want you to go out and make it a stupendous day, and I will see you the same time tomorrow. Bye.